Fire Emblem Three Hopes is out today, so I think it's time we played a new game on the channel. Except, new games are kind of expensive. I already bought a new game in February. What do you think I'm made of, Mr. Nintendo? Golden doubloons? Besides, I don't need a new Fire Emblem game. I already have Fire Emblem game at home. On my quest to find the most fun build for Elden Ring, I tried to bring Edelgard von Black Eagle to the lands between. She's my favorite house leader, after all, even if I think she's a villain. Certainly not the only villain or the worst villain, but definitely a villain. I support women's rights, but perhaps even more, I support women's wrongs. Let's get those boots bloody. I will swing my axe. Don't let the flames go down. We're kicking things off as a vagabond, already departing from my practice run where I started as a hero. If you think starting as a hero is a better idea since it has an axe, just keep in mind we're gonna ditch that axe pretty much immediately. Vagabond has some more Edelgard-esque armor at the beginning and a 100% physical shield, so it's a little bit better. I could maybe even beat the Grafted Scion, but there's no reason to, so uh, I'll just jump. It's a long way down to Limgrave, but we're fine. Eddie doesn't really take falling damage. Simple starting stuff, buy the crafting kit, get a horse from Monica, and ladies, pro tip, get your girl a horse. Girls love horses. Kind of expensive. Maybe we'll just commit arson later. The Vagabond starting weapon is a sword, which Edelgard is sword of good at, but not great. So we need a great weapon, like a great axe, which is being delivered by some giants in Southern Limgrave. You can't grab it until you lure the other soldiers to the front, but it's not too hard. Just tickle the giant's toes and they'll stomp on your foes. Then you can pick up a great axe, which requires a lot of strength. Uh-oh, that means we need a lot of runes. Let's head down to the Weeping Peninsula and grab a hammer that isn't a hammer because it's a Morning Star. The Morning Star. Those count as hammers in Fire Emblem, so I can justify using them, and more specifically, their bleed property in Elden Ring. We're not going to use this the whole time, even if it would be better. We're just using it to get the runes we need to use the Great Axe. There's also a Knight's Cavalry here. We can fight for the Barricade Shield Ash of War, which I'll want later, but I haven't leveled up yet, so uh, it didn't go well. Time to stop by the Church of America. We'd destroy the church, but it's already destroyed. Warp around to the back, forget to grab the Limgrave Pickle, then come back with the pickle and slap the dragon until it gives us a bunch of runes. We need to get our strength and dexterity up to where we need them, and, uh, who no. Dude, where's my vigor? As it turns out, giant weapons require giant stats, and that means we'll have very little room for health. That means we're gonna struggle for a little bit. See? That rat kills us while we're on our way to grab Radagon's Sword Seal, which also makes us take more damage. But it also boosts dexterity, strength, vigor, and endurance, so it's more helpful than harmful. But with enough strength and dexterity, we can use the Great Axe, which hits really hard. It's big and slow, but it makes up for it with raw, smashing power. Watch it hit Nerd Juice. Now, ignore the fact that he gets us to low health, and I have to wait for Felix to show up and finish him off. Inside the Murkwater Cave, we can hit Patches with an axe until he sells us some pickles and a pickle recipe to cook our own at home. I guess Patches would be... Anna? Maybe? I don't know. Before we take on Margaret, I want to upgrade the axe a little bit, so let's head down to the Limgrave Tunnel. Again, check out the massive damage this axe does to the Stone Digger Troll and his tiny little knees. It breaks his stance really fast and lets us smash his face for the win. I've talked about stance in previous videos, but it's basically an invisible status you can build up to break an enemy's posture, allowing for a bigger critical hit. Bigger weapons do more damage to the stance, which means that you'll get to crit faster. Couple more errands, let's talk to the blue lady who wants to marry us. It's nice that Eddie has options pick up a somber stone nine and eight for later and try to take on hubert to earn his undying devotion we die twice not enough hp yet we'll come back later for now we're going to take on margaret with a little help from lindhart lindy is bringing some magical skills but the real pain is coming from our axe it's just so good at keeping the stance pressure up slamming margaret will give us another pocket even though we don't have another talisman for that pocket just yet margaret was gatekeeping a gate that's like gatekeeping squared the next gatekeeper is gostock who has nothing to report, other than that there's a psycho murder man gluing limbs to himself inside. We could go the long way, or we could be cool and charge the main gate. A quick stop off on the right and we see it. A lion. If you think Edelgard will let a lion go unmurdered, you're sorely mistaken. She's like that dentist. I forgot that dentist's name and I didn't want to look it up. I guess the lion killed me first, but then we killed it. And then I got killed by a ballista on my way to the secluded cell grace right outside Godric's boss fight. Look, the main route will get you killed sometimes but it's way faster to just die and try again than go on the long path. 
since Godric is going to give us a bananas amount of runes, I want to make sure I'm getting the most out of him that we can. That means a brief detour to run through the abandoned cave, which means another brief detour to grab the quick step ash of war to dash through the poop on the floor. Edelgard wants blood on her boots, not poop. Totally different human fluid. Down at the bottom, the clean rot knights. We're outnumbered, which can be a little tricky, so it's not a first try victory. But after a bit of patience, we figure out that they can't handle getting hit with the great axe. It interrupts their attack animation, as long as we have the stamina for it, we can chain them together and eventually break their stance and enjoy a sweet critical hit. Getting the W will give us the Golden Scarab, boosting future rune acquisition. Of course, we want to bond with the other Black Eagles members as much as possible, so I summon Petra for the Godric fight. She's an outlander with a specialty in axes and doesn't like post-mortem mutilators. To be fair, who does? Before Godric enters his phase 2, he chops his arm off accidentally. It's a great time to get in a few fully charged heavy attacks. Those deal the most stance damage of any attack, so when phase 2 starts, I can dash in and smack him up even more while his dragon arm is throwing up fire. If you can break him down and get a crit, there is way less phase 2 to deal with. Phase 2s generally are harder. Thankfully, our Great Axe hits hard enough to get us through. It's such a wonderful weapon. Time to replace it. Trading in Godric's Hole at the round table will give us Godric's legendary weapon, with a super cool legendary name, the Axe of Godric. Huh, it hits hard. And we need a legendary weapon to kill more lions. Farewell, King of Delusion. If only we were born in a time of peace. You know, we've got more errands to run before we can do that, though, right? First stop, the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel for upgrade materials and to smash a Crystallion. It's fun with a big weapon. Same thing at the Ruin Strewn Precipice, up and up, upgrade materials along the way, and a boss at the end. Magma Worm Makar is really easy and slow. He attacks so slow that if you get hit, you have time to heal before you get hit again. Unless you don't have a lot of health, then you're gonna die in one hit. Okay, so second try, don't get hit, and start investing in the Vigor Stat. Stat? Up we go to Altus, land of more side quests. We've still got some time on the calendar before the fight at the end of the month. I skip the tree sentinel duo because I don't want to die and head to meet a merchant. Unfortunately, I get attacked while shopping. Rude. More unfortunately, I accidentally hit the merchant while trying to save him from skeletons. Oh god, please don't be mad. I need something you're selling. He's actually fine. We're able to get our big girl shield. It's actually too big for us right now and puts us into heavy loads, so we'll use it later. Off to the Altus Tunnel where we can grab the Arsenal Charm plus one, which increases our maximum equip load to wield the shield, and we'll grab a Sombra Stone 5 to level up the Axe of Godric even higher. It's our axe now, so I'm going to call it the Edelgard Axe. Since Mount Gelmir is in the area, let's go grab that Pearl Drake Talisman plus one this time and actually not forget it like we did last time. It boosts non-physical damage resistance. Then up the mountain for a Somber Stone six, the last one we can grab in the overworld. For some reason, there's no seven. I really wish there was. But you can get a seven by doing a bit of Ronnie's quest line and Edelgard does love flirting with the girls. So off to carry a manor, fight Ghost Loretta. She kills us. God, we need vigor. Beat her the next time with some big meaty hits and then talk to Ronnie. If I'm being honest, I started doing this to upgrade our weapon to plus 9 before we fight Dimitri, forgetting that defeat Dimitri is part of Ronnie's quest line. Whoops! So let's go slam our brother. Sorry, that sounds wrong. Let's go slam our stepbrother. Much better. Radon is the leader of the Red Main Lions. He excels in mounted combat and requires a whole army to bring down. But Edelgard has a ton of authority, so let's get authoritarian and command the Black Eagles to victory. Strategy isn't too complicated. Hit Dimitri more than he hit hit us. Our axe doesn't have any elemental abilities or status effects, it just hits things good. While things got a bit close, we were able to pull it out at the end, or Blythe was. It's so nice to have good help. Let's make sure we always have a loyal subject. When getting a subject, the first thing you need is a little bit of patience and a whole bunch of weed. The good stuff grows underground, so it's a good thing Dimitri's death opened up a hole. We just need to get past our mimic first. It can't deal damage to us. I just let it hit our shield and we get the guard counter. Oh, hey, let's talk about guard counters. If someone bonks off our massive shield, we can hit them with an attack that deals extra damage. I do it a bunch to the mimic tier. Not that I needed to, it literally can't hurt me. I'm just bullying at this point. Across the broken bridge, there's a bunch of torches scattered around. Lighting them will let us take on the deer. God, I hate deer so much. Time for violence. The Regal Ancestor Spirit is the best looking boss in the game, 100% and by a pretty substantial margin. That's not saying other bosses aren't cool, but goddamn, this one's pretty. And the music? 
slaps. Too bad the fight itself is not great. It would be too easy since its attacks are pretty slow and well telegraphed, but it gets quote unquote harder because it will just teleport away. Annoying, but not too bad. We also can't ride our horse here, which makes it worse kind of like the Elden Beast. It also has a big AoE attack that heals it. So you're gonna get melted if you try and hit it while it's healing and die, which means that you just gotta let it heal up and then fight it from nearly full health again. I didn't lose, but it was annoying. Again, it's pretty and the music's real good. Down in the city part of the Eternal City, I can open up a chest for the Great Ghost Glove Wart and also the next step of Ronnie's quest. Bring that magic fancy object to Ronnie. She'll give you another magic fancy object. Take that to the Carrion Study Hall where we can go grab another fancy magic object and then we can warp to the Einzel River main. There we can grab some more glove warts to level up our eventual ally and a somber stone seven, which will get the axe of Edelgard up to plus nine. So now we're ready to get ourselves a servant. We head back to Hubert with way more levels and a way better weapon and more strategy. Obviously, I'm not gonna die more than once. For some reason, I remember being able to hit him out of his attack animations with a heavy weapon, kind of like what we did to the clean rot knights. But second try, I'm less greedy and we get the win, which also gives us Hubert's Ashes. He requires 122 magic to summon, which is around 40 more magic than we have total, so we might need to grind a bit. Or cheat. Back to Mount Gelmnir, we climb some ladders. Lots of ladders. Lots and lots of ladders. What a thrill. There we can find an ulcerated tree spirit. It's part of the tree trio or tree o, I guess. These dudes, Erd tree avatars and the putrid avatars are all part of the same little family, but these are the fastest and most aggressive by far. Their attacks are just weird and twisty. It's kind of hard to figure out what they're gonna do. Not an issue though. I used a great strategy where I hit it more than it hit me. This one drops the cerulean hidden tier, which eliminates all magic consumption for 15 seconds. It's not a long time time, but it's long enough to summon Hubert. Check him out against the Draconic Tree Sentinel. He's got magic and a stick that he uses sometimes. He's actually the same as he is in the boss fight, so I'm basically summoning a boss to help us fight future bosses. Not a bad strategy. The downside is it takes up one of our physics slots. The Draconic Tree Sentinel ain't hard. I just hit him and then he dies. Before we head into the capital, I want to make sure I've got enough runes to level Hubert up, get our axe to plus nine, and maybe grab some vigor too. There's two easy bosses in the Dragon Barrel where we slapped that first dragon's ass, Grail and the Putrid Avatar. Grail is just about the most simple dragon in the game, with the little quirk that it hangs out on a bridge. It's even nice enough to fly closer to the grace right before it dies. What a pal. Right across the bridge is the Putrid Avatar. Not necessarily hard, but it's an endgame area, so if you screw up twice, you die. I'm not too embarrassed. I died. I'm a little embarrassed, but it's also dead. And soon, I'll be dead. Drop dead. Gorgeous, that is. First part of aesthetics is selling the deer soul for our legendary axe. Wow, it sure does look like the legendary axe from Fire Emblem, but it's not as good as the Godric axe, and the Ash of War doesn't really fit with Edelgard, and we can't change it since it's a legendary weapon, so we won't use it. That's actually how I played Edelgard in Fire Emblem as well, because I didn't want to repair the legendary weapons. I had to save it for the final boss, and I didn't know when the final boss was, so I just never used it. Whoops. Now it's time to go commit some heresy for better drip. At Volcano Manor, a nice lady wants to burn down the Erd tree. Sounds sick. She does it by giving us letters. She takes a very passive role. Not sure why killing this Istvan dude is gonna help destroy the tree god, but okay. Next up, it's Riley the Idol's turn. Despite his name, he is not AFK. He is, however, AIF, which stands for Axed in Face. After two tasks for the lady, Ferdinand will give us a letter. Unlike the lady, he's gonna come with us for the murder. We do have to run through the royal capital to get to this assassination, but it's not too bad. There's even an Erdtree avatar which drops a lord's rune. It's like 50,000 runes with extra steps. Then we can grab the ritual shield talisman which boosts our defense while we're at full health. It's great on characters that don't use armor. It's even better on a character that does have armor. Ferdy meets us in a castle to fight a wizard and a sword guy. I didn't fight the wizard for any strategic reason. He was just uh, there, so Ferdy fought the sword 
third guy. We both win at about the same time. That gives us the Red Wolf set, completing our Edel Garb. That's not my joke, I stole it from the chat, but I wish I came up with it. We now have enough runes to buy the Eruption Ash of War for later, and level up enough so that we can get rid of Radagon's Sword Seal so we don't have to take as much damage. Damage is bad. Look at the damage hitting the Knight's Cavalry. It doesn't like damage. We finally get our revenge after several hours of gameplay and get the Barricade Shield Ash of War. Here's how it works. It boosts your guard boost by 40%. Guard boost refers to how much the shield reduces stamina damage from blocking. Currently, our shield has a 72 shield boost, so 72%, which when boosted by 40% means we take no stamina damage. The only issue is it doesn't last very long. This actually works pretty well against the Gerald Ghost, since it only deals physical damage. There are a few attacks where he jumps or stomps the rocks that can get around the shield, but it's not a big issue. I mix in some more guard counters than usual, but otherwise, me and Hugh just bash him up. Since he gives us another pocket, I go grab a few more talismans. The Curved Sword Talisman from Stormvale Castle boosts our guard counters, and the Great Shield Talisman boosts our guard boost by 10% permanently, which is pretty great. On the way to get the Ritual Sword Talisman, I got sniped off my horse, and a bunch of goblins surround me, so, uh, Edelgard gets her boots bloody. Then we kill the Demi-Human Queen really fast, which gives us the Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% extra damage at full health. With all that taken care of, we head up to battle Morgoth, summoning Monica to work with us. She's so pretty. I mean, uh, she's pretty good at fighting. Morgoth resists holy damage. She deals holy damage, but it still keeps the pressure up. With Ed, Monica, and Hubert all working together, there's nothing we can't accomplish. We could even commit heresy. The Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. <sighs> Monica wants to burn down the Erd Tree, and honestly, it's like she read my mind. She just, like, gets me, you know? So we exit the royal capital, ride a couple of elevators, and make our way to Fargus. Here we can grab the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing to upgrade the shield a bit more. We'll need it in a second. After a lot of running, like, a lot of running, we make our way to the Fire Giant and hit him until he stops moving. But he's not the boss of the mountaintop of the Giants. It's that damned NPC, Juno. Oh, you thought it was Okina? Yeah, you don't have to fight Okina unless you want his katana or masks. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I do want Juno's helmet. It's horny, and that's important for Fire Emblem. Juno dual wields whips. They're such a terrible weapon. Big wind up, low damage, and they bounce off a shield. I died twice, though? So the challenge comes from the Hoslow whip, Juno's special whip that has a bleed effect. That goes through my shield, so I need to get in and hit him. I can't just let him bounce off the shield. But since his whips are making a big hitbox in front of him, how do I get in? Eventually, I just make it work work, balancing the blocking and the bleed procking, and get that horny helmet. Monica asks if we want to defy the gods and commit heresy, and yeah, I'm Edelgard, so let's burn that god tree down and wake up in Faramazula. It's a silly place, let's get out of here fast. Go to the comment section, Grace, thanks again, friend, for pointing out that it's here, and summon Ferdinand to fight the godskin duo. This fight goes so smoothly. I think bashing my head against it so many times in previous runs has gotten me enough practice to just to do it right. But I do think that there's something of note that happens. Specifically, me and Hubert take on the skinny one together, while Ferdy takes on the big boy. The big boy is obviously the harder one, but since me and the simp are working together, we're able to bully skinny fast enough to turn it into a 3v1. After that, it's just a cycle of bullying the god skin in the middle. I still think this fight is bad. I use the runes to upgrade the shield to plus 10, but also have to get the smithing stone 10 from the mountain top of the giants. Then I use the the rest of our runes to get our endurance high enough to wear Hoslow's horns without getting to the heavy load. On our way to Malekith, I get the swag jump first try, grab the somber smithing stone tent to max out Edelgard's axe, and body the death knight, I guess. Shouldn't he be on our side? Now, Malekith time, which is normally pretty miserable. But if he has a weakness, it's that he just doesn't have a lot of health. So if you can stance break him around four times, that's enough to beat him with the critical hits. Hopefully, it doesn't matter if I whiff one. It does. I got killed, and if I didn't whiff, he would have been the killed guy. Second try, I've switched out one of my Physic tiers to resist holy damage. In phase two, I focus on baiting the big flip explosion thingy. If you run forward during that front flip, you can get behind him and get a free hit in while he's exploding. But even if I can't get out of the way, it's not that big of a deal. I just throw the shield up and take so much less damage. So boom, second try Malika, and first try Godskins. Edelgard is best girl. These are facts. You're the best 
Beating Malekith sends us to the Ashen Capital, where we can fight Hanuman? I don't know why Hanuman is a boss, he dies so fast. And now we've got Godfrey, Gerald. Now that's a boss. He's from the Outlands. He hooks up with gods and he's a straight up badass. The worst part of this fight is what I call phase 1.5. There's no cutscene for it. He just slowly starts to bring down his foot for a massive stomp. That covers the whole arena in a shockwave and it's only slow the first time. After that, every one of his ground pounds that normally makes the spikes instead shoots the shockwave across the arena. It makes the middle 25% of his health a little tricky to get in on. So I got greedy and he was about to kill me. But look at this. Hubert saves my god dang life. Godfrey is about to plummet down and finish me off, but Hubert sends in a bomb at the very last second to start phase two and reset our positions. Absolute legend. I'll stop asking him about the animal bones under his bed. Phase 2 also has a 0.5 phase, but by the time he gets there, he's almost dead. So I just finish him off. Can't lose after Hubert saved my life. Before we fight the final boss, I'm going to run a few errands. Since the godskins were so fun this time, I decided to fight them again in the Spirit Caller Cave. Here they come in one at a time, but they're also immune to all status effects except sleep. Edelgard doesn't rely on status effects. She just hits things until they stop moving. Hitting these things until they die reveals the true enemy the snail, which doesn't fight back. So we win and get the godskin swaddling cloth, a talisman that heals you as you extend a combo. It's better on fast weapons, but it's the closest we can get to the Crest of Flames. More importantly though, it gives us enough runes to level up the original Great Axe, which we're going to infuse with the Eruption Ash of War from earlier to make it deal fire damage. Flame, recognize flame, Emperor. Then we activate Godric's Great Rune, kill an ulcerated tree spirit for one extra flask, and we're ready to dethrone God. They Heading into this, we're around 5 hours and 20 minutes into the game with 18 deaths. We probably can't beat Tanjiro's time, but if we can come in below 6 hours and under 20 deaths, I'd be very comfortable putting this in S tier, just a bit behind the Demon Slayer. I made it through Radagon fairly easily. Not great, but not too bad. I've got some flasks for the Elden Beast. The Eruption Ash of War seems to be pretty effective too. Could this be a first try victory? Ah, uh, no. But I actually have an idea. Quick trip to Kaled for another putrid avatar. We're over-leveled for it. I got hit way too many times, but it's fine. It drops the flame-shrouded crystal tier, which boosts fire damage by 20%. And now, we'll get the win. Okay, uh, next time? No, this got really bad. I think I got in my head here. There were a lot of bad dodges. I don't feel fair putting it on Edelgard. We died 13 times, which is over 40% of our deaths and 15% of our time on this one boss. We finish at 6 hours, 23 minutes and 27 bosses slain. So while it's a little slower than Wolverine, we actually killed bosses faster in this run and died less. I'm gonna slide this behind Batman in A tier, especially since a lot of the Elden Beast runs were kind of my fault. While the big axe is slow, having a shield and actual armor is such a treat. It's weird that I don't get to use armor a lot, but dang, lots of characters like to punch people in their underwear. So just get something a little bit faster or maybe something with a status effect. And check out our other videos. Maybe you'll find an Elden Ring build that works better for you.